Hello dear students and today we will be discussing about uh, the anatomy part 2 in which I will be taking you through a tour of uh, the pelvic uh, anatomy, the perineal uh, anatomy and a couple of structures which are related to it like the, um, you know, the pelvic bones, the muscles, the ligaments, the diaphragm specially and the complex orientation of the perineum which I will try to illustrate you better with the help of diagrams and 3D uh, videos. So this is going to be a little better than what you uh, study from the books because it's very difficult to, you know, kind of imagine the 3D structure of the perineum, which is very, very important to imagine. For example, there was a time at which it was very difficult for me to imagine about the, you know, the orientation of levator and eye muscles inside the perineum. So actually, they form a bowl, something like this. And here, over here, as you can see from my hand, is a, a you know, the urogenital hiatus. Why is there a urogenital hiatus? Because of the passage of so many structures which are going through it outside the perineum. For example, the, uh, the you know, the rectal opening, the urethral opening, the vaginal opening. It's actually opening through this defect in the levator and eye muscles and otherwise they form like a, you know, a bowl and like this. And everything else is like suspended inside it. This was one of the parts which uh, was very difficult to understand. And I'll take you through this, uh, you know, journey into understanding the orientation of how the, you know, the perineum and the pelvic muscles, they are oriented in 3D figure. Uh, guys, a, a little announcement I'd like to make uh, at the start of the session is that my complete course, which you already know, with this, which is a complex, uh, you know, a comprehensive coverage of both obstetrics and gynae. Uh, is there of course on my app many of you have already taken it many of you are planning to take it but um, see uh, like I said before all those students who are my regular students who have already taken and subscribed to this course will be given a you know an access to the upcoming updated version of my complete course which includes a lot of notes as per your request uh, you know the earlier ones had um, notes at that, that places where it was difficult to understand from your standard textbooks uh, but uh, standard textbooks, many people of uh, you know they are a little you know hesitant in taking up and they do not want to you know consult at the last hour. They want just the notes. Uh, my advice still will be that you know the the consulting uh, standard textbooks should never be you know ignored and the notes should always be given the, that much importance as that you know passing the exam is concerned. But your standard textbook should also hold a very important position and you should be starting with your standard textbooks first. Anyways, so what I'm trying to say right now is that my um, complete course is being updated very soon. The prices will be revised. So everybody who is planning to take the complete course can do so in this month uh, because by probably by next starting month, I'll be uh, announcing the complete uh, package in which uh, obviously there's going to be a, a lot of comprehensive notes and videos. And uh, the students who've already taken the course will get an automatic access to it without any extra charges. But the ones who've got to take it for the first time, they'll of course be taking it with the revised prices. So that was one announcement. Let's uh, begin with the pelvis. Pelvis is composed of many bony, uh, you know, the pe bony pelvis and soft tissues. There are two parts. You've got the bony pelvis and then you've got the soft tissues. Uh, as you know, bony pelvis has been described in Tyson. and I like to omit this sentence. I have described this bony pelvis in a separate package called the Gudda and pelvis and it should not be mixed over here. You already know the ilium, ischium, pubis, the three bones of the, you know, the pelvis and uh, that's about it. The, di the you know, the uh, diameters and, you know, the uh, notches and everything has already been explained there. So this is not going to be taken up again. Here we are here for the soft tissue. So the soft pelvis is further divided into the pelvic side walls and the pelvic floor. So before I go on to explaining you what exactly is this, have a look at this diagram, a very important diagram. There's nothing that can be missed. So over here, you can see this, the bony pelvis over here, right here, which you can see. Okay. And this over here is the issue pubic ramus, which is very, very important because then you'll, for, you'll understand what is issue rectal fossa, right? So this is issue pubic ramus. And over here, just see this lining muscle. This is called the obturator internus muscle, right? Very important muscle in this part. Why? Because it's got a landmark of so many things and so many structures are related to obturator internus muscle. Then you can see this at right angle. Something is going and joining. Obvious it is uterine vessels, right? And over here, these two, which you can see small, coming at towards you literally. This was going like this and this is coming towards you. This is your, the ureter. I hope you've already seen that, uh, you know, that uh, video of mine in which I've tried to show how at right angles they cross what, at one another and how close in proximity at one point they are to one another. So 
and here i was this is the levator and i can you see the levator and i then a pelvic diaphragm call it the pelvic diaphragm because it's actually a diaphragm you know how the diaphragm is the 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 diaphragm that we talk about it's like this in a similar way this is also cutting it into half but more so like this it's like a bowl that's why the orientation have a look it's a oblique running fibers what you can see over here is the urogenital diaphragm with the muscles and all but this is a completely this is a different this is a pelvic diaphragm so you have a lot of diaphragms a lot of hiatus a lot of triangles over here and i'll tell you as we go but this diagram you know the importance of this diagram cannot be over emphasized any further so just have a look at this just uh, briefly to understand obviously this is the uterus this is the you know the cornual appendages this is the vagina this is the vestibule minora major this is a separate, separate thing altogether over here you will find the bulbo cavernous muscle the vestibular bulb and over here okay this is actually the perineal membrane the inferior fascia of urogenital uh, diaphragm and uh, then you have also the urogenital diaphragm as such with the well, of course the muscles were transverse perineal muscles and stuff and of course over here as you can see over towards the lateral side you have the ischio cavernous muscle this is the bulbous spongiosus and this is the ischio cavernous muscle very important okay and then over here which was any anyway, important thing i i wanted to tell you is somewhere over here you see the fascia lata merging with the colis fascia and attached to the ischio pubic ramus so colis fascia is nothing but a deeper layer of the super superficial fascia and this is called the superficial perineal compartment over here as you can see superficial perineal compartment over here this is the deep deeper layer of superficial fascia so obviously this is the deep fascia right then inferior fascia this is the superior fascia this is the inferior fascia because it's deeper is this is the superficial fascia and colis fascia is just nothing but one of the layers of superficial fascia it was very confusing for me at some point in time but obviously with reading more you understand and retain more uh pelvic side walls i'd like to tell you so the inner aspect of bony pelvis which is covered by obturator and turnus muscle its fascia and the membrane covering the obturator membrane over here right this is forming the bony side wall right the obturator and turnus muscle the fascia covering the obturator and turnus muscle a hiatus that it gives to you know the uh, obturator vessels and all which is right here in the upper part of the membrane there is a gap the obturator canal for the passage of the obturator vessels and the nerve the most important structure in the pelvic side wall happen to be the ureter pelvic vessels and pelvic fascia we'll I'll, i'll explain it to you when we go further now let's talk about the pelvic fascia so as you can see we have a pelvic parietal fascia we have visceral fascia and we have the deep endopelvic fascia okay let's start with the last one first see it's a connective tissue with along with pelvic cellular tissue condenses to form the ligaments of the pelvis serves as a neurovascular conduct conduit and the endopelvic connective tissue forms six ligaments three pairs and two septae okay so they are deeper deeper connective tissue and the you know the ones which actually form ligaments of the pelvis okay you uh, you know i'm talking about the pelvis right now we are not yet in the abdomen so the deeper ligaments the deeper in this called the endopelvic fascia i'll describe to you again the visceral fascia is nothing but the loose sensible highly elastic fascia you know which uh, loosely invests the vagina uterus bladder rectum and allows some high degree of physiological distension so basically that's the fascia which is covering this vagina uterus bladder rectum and then we come to the parietal fascia far away from these fascias what exactly it is so it is a thick tough membrane fascia that covers the pelvic surfaces of the skeletal muscles of the pelvic side walls like obturator and turnus piriformis and provides a muscle attachment to the bony pelvis also serves as an anchoring point for uh, the visceral endopelvic fascia and it has two important condensations so pelvic parietal pelvic fascia is divided into two arcus tendinous levator ni and arcus tendinous fascia pelvis or which is also called as white line now what is this arcus tendinous levator ni just go back to this can you see the levator ni over here now just read this arcus tendinous fascia pelvis right and just go a little above arcus tendinous levator ni so you see so you see th these two fascias this one as you can see over here this is the arcus tendinous fascia pelvis and this is arcus tendinous arcus tendinous levator ni fascia okay right and now i'll tell you a little bit more about it so it's a condensation of parietal fascia covering the medial surface of the obturator internus muscle it extends 
from uh, the pubic tubercle anteriorly to ischial spines posteriorly. Okay, the iliococcygeus part of levator ani muscles it arises from the arcus tendinus levator ani. Have a look at this. Arcus tendinus levator ani. So it's actually starting from the pubic tubercle anteriorly and going like this is the fascia, complete fascia. It's going till the posterior side. It's going till what? What do they say? Uh, to the Extends from the pubic tubercle inter anteriorly and goes ischial spines to the ischial spines posteriorly. And it's overlapping the uh, structures that are condensing over the structures that it's passing through. So it's definitely covering, it's definitely covering the obturator. I don't have a video for this because this part is not that important as well. But you just need to know a little what exactly is um, arcus tendinus levator and I. It's nothing but a parietal fascia which covers the medial surface of the obturator internus muscle. Have a look at this. This is the obturator internus muscle and there over here you have this arcus tendinus levator and I, right? And it's starting from this also you should know the pubic uh, tubercle and going to the ischial spine posteriorly, right? Ischial spine posteriorly. And iliococcygeus muscle, part of levator and I muscle, it arises from this. Then I talk about arcus tendinus fascia pelvis or the white line is condensation covering the medial surface of obturator internus and also levator and eye muscle. So it's now going a little like this. Okay. This was like this and this, this fascia is over here. It extends from the inner surface of the pubis bone to the ischial spine and presents the lateral point of attachment of the anterior vaginal wall, pubocervical fascia and proximal rectovaginal septum. So I'll explain it to you through this diagram again. This is the one I'm talking about. So what all can you see over here? The attachment of what all? See, over here you have the pubocervical fascia, right? The rectum posteriorly and the vaginal uh, surface anteriorly. This is what it is. Again, not very important. So otherwise I would have explained it to you with diagrams and everything. But this is sufficient to understand. Now, why is what is the clinical significance? It's very important at your level, as I told you in the last lecture also. What is very important is the clinical significance of all these. So the pelvic cellular tissue and the endopelvic fascia, they provide support, basically. So first is the support to the pelvic organs, especially through the uterus, through various ligaments. So everything attaches or goes at least through this, number one. Number two, provides a protective covering over the terminal ureter and pelvic blood vessels. In fact, you know the tunnel that you're talking about is formed through this, through the condensation of this uh, arcus tendinus, uh, this pelvis one, not the levator nine, the arcus tendinus pelvis. All right, and the blood, uh, pelvic blood vessels. Infections, very important, can spread from pelvis along the gluteal vessels to buttocks, external iliac vessels to thighs, along the round ligament to the groins, and along the ureter to the perinephric regions where abscesses can form. So it's a complete line, you know. Once it happens, ureter say, uh, you know, it will go, sorry, from the pelvis, it can go to the buttocks. Just imagine. From the pelvis, the infection can move till the but it's because of the gluteal vessels. It can go to the thighs because of the external iliac vessels. It can go to the groin because of the ureter, uh, the round ligament, and to the perinephric regions because of the ureter. And like I always say, what, what should be the blood supply? It should not be ratified. It should be just remembered. Blood supply to the pelvic side walls is from the visceral branches of the internal iliac artery. So when you're talking about inside the pelvis is an internal iliac artery. When you're talking about outside the pelvis is external iliac artery. And we're talking about the perineum. What is it? I explained it to you in the last class. It's the pudendal artery, pudendal nerve, pudendal vessels. Okay, perineal area. Because we'll be going to the perineum very soon in the next session. Corresponding veins, they follow the course. The nerve supply is dual, sympathetic from hypogastric and pelvic plexus, and the parasympathetic from the sacral plexus. Uh, I think uh, the pelvic floor in which there is a lot of diagrammatic presentation and uh, the video, I'll take it in the next session. So just wait and watch.